So I, I will start this third uh, session about uh, melanoma of the head and neck. I thank uh, a lot uh, Professor Knesch to invite me to this uh, very interesting meeting, um, which is very well organized. I will focus uh, my 12-minute uh, talk on mucosal melanoma because it's uh, my expertise. And uh, I think uh, mucosal melanoma, the head and neck, focus uh, all the issue that we can have in uh, uh, cutaneous uh, melanoma via head and neck. So mucosal melanoma via head and neck is a quite rare uh, disease. It's uh, less than 1% of uh, all melanoma. But for mucosal melanoma, head and neck site is the most uh, frequent. Uh, by the op in opposition with cutaneous melanoma, it seems that incidence of mucosal melanoma remains stable, uh, and it uh, occurs more frequently in men than women, especially people in the uh, seventh decade. There is some issue with uh, diagnosis. Uh, we need to differentiate a mucosal melanoma and a pigmented mucosal lesion, especially in the oral uh, mucosa, then we have to differentiate primary uh, tumor uh, versus uh, localization of uh, distant metastasis in the oral or uh, uh, sinus. And there is some pathological characteristic helping with uh, immunohistochemistry that can uh, help for this differentiation. Also, we can look for precursor lesion, and when we find them around the tumor, it's a sign for, to say that it's a primary tumor. Staging and workup. Uh, AGCC 2002 TNM classification is not accurate uh, to stage this uh, mucosal melanoma of the head and neck because when we use it, almost all patients are uh, stage T4B with tumor with more than four millimeter in, uh, in thickness. And what uh, people usually use is a TNM classification for squamous cell carcinoma uh, and differentiate uh, according to the uh, site. For the workup, we need to do a total body skin examination to look for uh, eventually uh, primary uh, cutaneous melanoma. Then we recommend to do a CT scan and or an MRI of the head and neck and to carefully check for distant metastasis by CT scan or PET scan uh, with an examination of the brain, the chest, the abdomen, and the pelvis. We also recommend to do a, a dosage of serum lactic dehydrogenase. Mucosal melanoma of the head and neck are most frequently found in the nose and paranasal sinuses. The second localization is the oral cavity, and especially in the upper part, in the heart palate or in the maxillary alveolus. The oversight are very, very rare. Surgery remains uh, the main first uh, treatment, and a radical and wide surgical resection is uh, recommended. But there is some uh, controversies that I hope will be discussed in the, by the panel uh, of uh, experts that uh, what we can find in the mucosal melanoma, but are uh, also important for cutaneous melanoma. How large should be the margin for the uh, advanced tumor, locally advanced tumor in most cases, we should recommend a two centimeter margin, but we have to deal with anatomical and functional limitation, and that surgeons usually do, they do as they do with squamous cell carcinoma. 
how to deal with extensive in situ melanosis that could be associated with the primary tumor and that can be what we can find it uh, during the diagnosis, but we also can find that during the follow up. Do we have to remove all the mucosa, especially in the nose, in the paranasal sinuses, or do we just follow and do a, a clinical examination? The treatment of the neck is also an issue. Do we have to do a systematic treatment of the neck? Some case report, some uh, in the institution, uh, some surgeon use sentinel node biopsy for mucosal melanoma on very, very few cases, uh, only for staging. And what we recommend is to do a, a, a selective neck dissection for a mucosal melanoma of the head and neck. Therapeutic neck dissection with, for patients with advanced node disease are questionable because uh, it's, it's maybe not very useful for the prognostic of this patient. And in our experience in the series of Gustarussi and in over uh, several series, we have shown that patients with advanced uh, neck node disease always uh, develop uh, distant metastasis or have simultaneous distant metastasis. So this stage two tumor are very close to stage, stage three. Oops. What is important to know is the survival. If we are looking for recent report and uh, uh, because uh, there is historical uh, series uh, taking uh, patients for 15 or 14 uh, years. So if you just focus on, on recent report using the new uh, image, imaging uh, technique, we see that local control rates still very, very poor with uh, control rate between 30 to 50%. Five-year overall survival rate are also very, very poor, between 20 to 30, 35%. But we all have long-term survival patients. Distant metastasis is also a big issue. It's around 50% of a patient will have distant metastasis. It's uh, associated with local relapse, and mostly when patients has local relapse, he has a simultaneous or he will develop distant metastasis. That's why uh, salvage treatment by surgery is very questionable. And as I said before, positive neck nodes with advanced stage on the nodes are quite always associated with DM. As radiotherapy for melanoma, as you know, uh, since um, many years before, old uh, uh, biological reports said that it's a radio resistant tumor with in vitro study. And with this in vitro study, it has been said that hypofractionation will work better. And we, we have a non randomized study on the large cohort of patients with positive re effect with hypofractionation. But this uh, uh, old study has not been confirmed by a small size P, uh, phase three from the RTOG for cutaneous melanoma. And for uh, mucosal melanoma, uh, and especially for nasal and paranasal sinus tumor, so we, we have to deal with the proximity of the optical structure and the central nervous system. What has been shown is that uh, radiotherapy improves local control after surgery, especially for patients with positive margin, which are quite all patients with na nasal and paranasal sinus tumor. It has been indicated for unresecable uh, lo uh, local uh, disease, but we still have a lot of unresolved uh, questions that I hope will be also discussed by the panel, is uh, do we have to do an elective nodal irradiation after tumor resection, especially what we have to do with 
So I did not touch anything. What do we have to do with patients with N0, uh, N minus, uh, PN0 uh, tumor? What is the total dose and the fra fractionation recommended? How, do you, how you, can we use the new modalities with, to define a new volume or new technique with neutron or proton? And then how can we use a new, uh, a new chemotherapy and new targeted molecular therapy concomitant or adjuvant with radiotherapy? Systematic uh, treatment uh, are usually used in palliative setting for mucosal melanoma, but because of the, the very bad prognostic and the very high rate of DM, maybe we should discuss adjuvant treatment for this uh, tumor uh, by using cutaneous melanoma protocol. But uh, very, there are some uh, recent reports that show that mucosal melanoma have a different biological behavior uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, cutaneous melanoma. For example, uh, there is a, a CGH RA study that, said that, that show that we have a distinct set of genetic alteration. Thank you for your attention.